Hi, welcome to Give Your Walls Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. This is a painting show that uh, speaks from the heart. And why do we call it Give Your Walls Some Soul? Basically, when, we, when you watch this show, I talk about the things that go on in your head, the things that go on in your heart, and it's not your typical um, how to squeeze an inch of paint out and you're going to get this kind of a product. This tells about all the stuff you, you usually don't hear. And, uh, so that's what I mean about soul. And, and if you've got naked or boring walls, hopefully I can help you out by showing you how to give your own walls some soul. What we did on our last show was a landscape. And it was very loose and fun, and, and we, I really had a blast doing it. What I did was I took one reference photo, did a painting here on the show, and then I took from that same reference photo, I did four paintings. And it's probably hard to tell which one, which one I did on the show because I deleted a fence. Um, I did entirely different compositions from the same reference photo, but I really had some fun with it. So if you get something that you're really interested in, try it from some different perspective. Try it with some different music and see what kind of soul that you can get from the painting. So this is the one I did on TV last time. And uh, what I did in this, basically when I took it home, I refined it a little bit, but not a lot. I took, uh, I did, a lot of times there's, when there's something that needs to be changed in a painting, it's more about deleting rather than adding. So I took away the fence and really simplified the whole painting. Um, the one below, that was more of a moody, add some wild strokes to it, it's a very lush landscape. And then I, most of my paintings that you see me do, are horizontal format, I mean, are ver vertical format. And so to do two that were in a horizontal manner were, were very unusual. And in fact, uh, other, pa other painters say that I'm horizontally challenged. I don't get, um, usually don't do things in this orientation. But today, I'm gonna do something that I don't do, two things that I don't normally do. One is paint something in the horizontal format. And the second one, um, as you can see on the, on the screen here, these are two vertical formats because I just had to try two in that, in that arena. Um, today we're gonna work on a painting that's an entirely done in cool tones. And you know that I love my reds, I love the warm colors, and I told the director today <laughs> before I started the show that the only way I was gonna do this is I had to wear red socks. You know, I, you can't see them, but uh, <laughs> that was the only way. If I'm not using any red on my palette, there had to be some red somewhere. So um, we're doing an entirely cool painting on a horizontal format. So this is something new, and uh, it'll be exciting. All right, what is this? This is a rosette, and it was a ceiling fixture in an old house that is now hanging up in Southern California on a pool house. I love the way that the light is hitting the statuary, and I love the, the relief. So what I'm gonna do is make this look, my goal today is the kind of soul that I want from this painting is to make it look warm using cool colors. And I'm hoping that I can achieve that with light and dark rather than warm and cool. So how do I start out? Well, first, I did do a drawing. And I'm going to go ahead and just get that sketched in so that I can just have a place, place set for me. Just a map. I'm using some Payne's Gray, which is like ivory black, but it's a cool form of ivory black. I'm just going to go ahead and really rough in this outline so I know where to go. Otherwise, I lose my place. And this is rough. It is not, um, not meant to be a detailed drawing. We've talked about that before. I feel like if I do have a detailed drawing and I try to stick to that, I'm merely filling in the lines. I'm really like coloring rather than painting. Let's see. That's there. Just looking to see. Now, I did a trial run this morning of this painting to see what I could get done. I did it actually. The other two that I've got going in the studio are, are imagine this, they're vertical formats. And uh, they were more involved and more complicated. And there's no way that I could get them done in an hour. Now, that's the other thing about this painting show. What you see is what you get. Whatever I get done in an hour is, is what, what I accomplish. We have no editing. We just paint and go. 
That gives you a good idea of what you can accomplish in an hour. Also, I feel like another way that you can, you can get some soul from this program is that uh, I don't sugarcoat it when I make a mistake. I tell you what I did, how I'm going to try to correct it, and see if we can move on. Or sometimes I throw them out. You know what I, I heard about, speaking of throwing, I, I had a, a viewer call in, and he was really distressed that I threw a painting out. And um, he said that Tchaikovsky hated the Nutcracker, just hated it. And imagine what, what life would be like if he had thrown that out. And I said, well, i got to tell you, the ones I threw out, <laughs> they were not the Nutcracker. <laughs> they really needed to die. <laughs> But I really saw his point that maybe I'm not necessarily a good judge of what needs to go sometimes. <clears throat> Just really roughing this in so that I've got an idea of where to put this stuff. The biggest challenge I ran into when I painted this this morning was keeping my lights and darks clean. Just getting this rough in. The interesting thing, uh, I think the interesting thing about this face, if you can see the reference photo, is that there's not a lot of detail in his face. There's just masses of light and dark. And uh, if you can convey the information just using a little bit of light and dark, you're really ahead of the game. I, uh, I reminded of some, I saw some storks which is a really rare thing to see over the weekend. I saw 14 storks in this huge formation. And it was just incredible. And, and I said, God, I'm going to go to my husband. I'm going to go look them up on the internet and find out you know, what, what, they're, what they're like and why they're flying here. And what he was telling me is that these, these storks, they catch these thermal lifts. And so what they do is they, they've got, they travel huge, long distances. And by catching these lifts, they're able to go further and farther and, and, in an expeditious manner than you could if they were like flopping. <laughs> so, so what I want to do with painting, it really does, it really does relate. <laughs> what I want to do with painting is to be able to show you that just by putting a minimal amount of color down, a minimal amount of paint, not necessarily a lot of detail, I want to take advantage of that lift and really go for a far distance. They were just incredible birds to watch. I'd never seen them in person. I mean, the last time I saw them were when I was a kid on a cartoon, you know, carrying babies. But they fly all the way to Poland. I'll let you know when my paintings start selling in Poland. Have some in Switzerland. OK, that's a good rough. It really isn't looking like much, but that's where we're at right now. OK, it's got a pretty squirrely little face here. OK, that's good enough so that I can tell where I'm going and what I want to do. Now, I, of course, I'm going to make some changes um, I always have to change the reference photo a little bit because there are things that work in the photo that don't necessarily work on the canvas. So I, I appro when I did this this morning, I, I typically would start with the darkest darks, especially since they're easy to see against a light canvas, and then put in the lights. But the problem with doing that is that I, I didn't keep my whites clean at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lightest lights in first. And the only problem for you as a viewer in doing that is it almost looks like I'm not doing anything for a while. <laughs> you don't start to see anything for a minute. But, uh, but I've got to go ahead and put the lightest ones in first. The canvas is one that I, I, I had thrown this. Uh, there was a, another canvas on the stretcher board. And it was one of those that I threw out. And I restretched some canvas over here and used a very um, thick texture of gesso. So some of the texture shows through at some really interesting places. OK, so <laughs> I told you I was going to start with the lights. My habit is to start with the darks. And the first thing I went and grabbed was some Payne's gray. So what the heck, I got it on my brush. <laughs> we'll go back to the darks. 
You can see some of the texture there. There's dark hair. I think it would be, let's see, does it kind of go like that? Looking to see what this kind of does. I'm just scrubbing it in. I'm using a real scruffy older brush because if you've got a lot of texture, it's going to kill your brushes. You'll, you don't want to use your good brushes on something like this. Okay, I don't know if I like that shape, so I'm just changing it. It doesn't have to be an exact representation of, of the reference photo. It just happens to be something that you like, and if you like it, it's going to have soul. If you don't like it, it's going to have soul. It's just going to be a different kind of soul. <laughs> ones, the ones I don't like have some negative energy. Bad juju's. Okay, let's see, it's dark over here. I talk always about balance in painting, so how far down do I want to go with the dark? Maybe down to about right here. I don't have enough paint, nor do I have enough medium. That's better. I'm going to do another one of these that's in warm colors, and when we do the next show, you'll be able to see the difference in moods strictly by warm and cool. The trick is for me not to go back into this and warm it up. That's, that's going to be the hard part. Okay, do I want to take this a little bit further down? Maybe, but not yet. Okay, since I already did that and decided I was going to go straight for the darks, I'm going to find the darkest darks on here, and really, right on his little face. See, now I'm not getting a tiny brush in and putting in some little eye, but you will be able to tell what he's doing. And if you do get a chance to look at the reference photo, he looks like he's out in the sun and he's squinting, and I don't quite like that expression, so I'm changing, changing his expression. If you can't make it the way you want it, why paint it? Okay, that kind of goes up like that. That's really dark. He's got one black eye there. A little shiner over here. That's kind of dark, but not that dark. I'll leave that alone. So that's dark. Where are the darkest darks? I don't want to overdo the dark, because that, that's where you lose the quality of light. Now, I have a, I have a varied palette of, of a lot of different colors, and I wasn't sure whether I would just do white and paint gray to get started, and I think I will. If I, uh, if I were to do a warm painting, I would add some cad yellow deep to the white. But I'm not, so I'm just going to a little bit of, uh, i got to use some red. But it's a cool red, <laughs> just slightly. I left it on my palette, but I really am going to try not to use it. Okay, it's a cool pink, kind of pink my grandma would really like. Okay. Use the toilet paper to wipe your knife. It's not pretty, but it's effective. Okay. So let me, let me go back to those light lights. And I'm actually going to put some new medium out that's not contaminated, so I don't pick up some of that darker color. Because what happens is I, I get into the painting process, and I have really good intentions of keeping everything clean and separated. And um, it all goes by the wayside once I get started. Okay, where's some light light? Right here by his nose. And right under this dark. And you, you probably can't see that much yet. I have to tell you, for somebody who likes to paint really warm, it is just killing me not to put some uh, lighter color in here to warm it up. 
That that cat yellow deep would just be nice. But one of my viewers challenged me to paint a cold painting, so I'm going for it. You see, I really do read the emails. Okay, that's light. Just throwing in all the light, and I'm exaggerating it, because I'll go back in later, and again, it's, it's easier to make something a little darker than it is to go over the top and make it lighter. Okay, there's light there. Where else is there light? Right there. His whole side of his face, you know, it's funny. It feels like a male presence to me, but it almost looks like he's got a set of pearls on, so I'm not sure what's up with him, but um, I'm going to call him a him because he kind of looks male to me. I'm still putting in the light, which, God, you probably can't see it all. have to put in some of the other major areas. Okay, that's light, that's light. Okay, well none of that makes sense until you put something next to it. So I'm going to put a little more light at the top and then go into another color. It all needs some sort of context. I don't even know what that is don't have to know what, what you're painting as long as you can identify the shapes. Sometimes I wonder. I'd like to just know. Okay, that, that can get darker. And you know what? I think that shape, when I, I see an awkward shape, I'm going to go ahead and change it. All right, so it's got a little relief thing going here. So there's something there. I'm, ch I'm checking my drawing right now. I don't like that. Maybe a little there. Chop that off a little bit. Yeah, I like that shape better. Okay. I need to mix a medium dark, so I'll do that now. Right now, this first part of the process, or the first part of the show, I'm going to do this almost in Payne's gray and white, and I'll add color later. If I were doing this at home, I might, I would probably do the color as I go, but it would take me more than an hour to get it done. Oh, that's a nice mid, mid gray, cool gray. Okay. Again, I'm grabbing a, another scruffy brush. This is a good one. Need a little more control on this one. Okay, so what's a medium? Where are some of the medium places? Well, this side of his face. You know, that could be even darker, but I can rectify that later. And actually, I need to leave a little space for something a little lighter. The principles here for this statuary would be the same as painting a regular live human face uh, in that you're looking at planes of the face. I think that needs to be darker. I don't want to mess with that yet. Okay. 
This morning when I was painting it, I, I went for quite a while before I, I uh, stood back and said, wow, it's actually starting to look like something. Um, and I realized it's not at that, at that stage yet. I gotta change his eyes too because he just, he really looks like he's in pain. That's not happy. Okay, they've kind of got this little slant going here like he's asleep and I'm gonna make them, let's see, if they're going at that angle, we'll, we'll try it there and then we'll, we'll change it. This goes all the way up to here. I'm looking at shapes of dark and light. And really the bottom of his nose is just a blob of black. If you ever remember the painting we did of Willie, doesn't take that much to de define the nose. Okay, that was a blob. Now his mouth is really interesting too. He kind of has that little Elvis Presley pout and uh, that's got to go. So I'm going to turn that up a little at the corner. But you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go through a number of evolutions before we get it to the point where I want it. Okay, there's some dark under his chin there. That's dark. Let's go down to his pearls. And it's funny, okay, I'm not, I'm not finishing one area of his face. I'm more staying along with what, what shape is this and what color is it. So I'm, I'm moving down in this direction. This is dark under this. Okay, we're getting three brushes going now. Sometimes I think I hold him there for balance. I had one student who always had his hand behind his back while he was painting. And uh, I said, God, you know, why, why do you always stand like that? And I said, is it a balance thing? Well, he was an engineer. And he was taught when he was working on, on any of the equipment that he needed one hand behind him so that he wouldn't electrocute himself. So he paints that way, too. He's an awesome painter. It does help balance. Okay. So by painting down here this little bit of dark, it started to give his little pearls or whatever that is, beads around him, um, some form. So sometimes it's a matter of, of uh, what is that down there? No idea. So I'm going to lift the canvas up. There are times when things need to make sense for me. Um, and I really should be just concentrating on the shape, but, you know, I don't always. All right, I'm going to contaminate this dark brush and finish this area here. Now, in the reference photo, it's light, but it doesn't have the right punch being totally light. So I'm going to make this a, a medium gray right here. This gesso is nice. It really absorbs the paint. This will dry to a kind of a flat finish. And I may or may not put any medium over the top. Depends. What does it depend on? Depends on if part of it shows up shiny and part of it shows up flat, then I'll put medium over the top because I want it to be consistent. But if, uh, but if it's all consistent, I may leave it flat. Okay. Now to keep that white from being contaminated, I'm just going to move some of that over and go straight into it. And that, that's giving me a nice gradation here that I didn't want totally a light color. Okay. Good. All right. Now I go back to the, you know, it's funny, I really would like to just sit there and focus on the, on the face and I need to keep moving and covering the canvas. So I'm going to do that. Go back to the darks and the medium darks and get this thing roughed in. So the top of this has 
let's see, right around here. When you change the composition, it gets a little squirrely because you're trying to figure out what, where, where are you on your reference photo. I get lost. I get lost even when I'm by myself in the studio. I'm not talking to anybody. It just happens. I can't say that it's because I'm distracted. Well, I could, but that'd be, uh, that'd be wrong. Okay, the top of his little, oops, that was too much. Top of his little beads there, and most of the places are dark. I'm gonna, I'm gonna over accentuate the light again with a smaller brush so that I don't lose it because by the time I blend it all this nice light is going to go away uh, and I don't want that so I just need to uh, you know I think the biggest trick is to put it down and leave it clean it put it down and leave it not fuss with it so I'm going to just put it down see I touched it If you put it down and, and leave it, it's the equivalent of getting the lift from the storks. If, <laughs> if you mess with it, you are flapping, just flapping and flapping. And I've done both. Okay, need to add a little bit of uh, dark in there so that this little flourish makes sense. And does he have another little kind of rosette thing going on here? You need to put in that other dark so that that makes sense. Okay, where are these little lines of dark? Dark there. Right under here is dark. Don't even know what that's doing. Okay. I'm trying to get that circular motion in the painting and everything to line up so that you get that feeling, the soul part of that, not just the, the uh, linear left brain side of it. Okay, so there's a rosette there. Hmm. All right. We'll need to put in some more darks again so that it starts to make sense. Smaller brush. Maybe around his head. A little hair. I'm not going to... See, my drawing is totally, totally gone. But he had some kind of squirrely little, squiggly little hair going on here. And it was dark. And this is the dark side of his face. There was kind of a dark. Let's see, what's that? That's lighter. Right here it gets a little touchy because if you, if you put in the wrong stuff, it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to put in a little light here. But it's not light light. It's just lighter than the other part of it. That doesn't make sense. It's not white. It's like one gradation darker than that. This side of him is light, although he does have that little bit there. This is mid-tone. He's got some reflected light right here under his chin. We'll give him a double chin, which I may remove. It depends. What I'll do is once we get the canvas covered, I'll decide what I want to keep and what I don't want to keep. Okay, this, he's got this huge thing of light there. This needs to be lighter than that. So we're on the light side of the face now. So even his darks aren't that dark. What's the deal with his nose? He needs a little uh, bulbous thing here. Give it some form. And so right under there, he's got that light there. Start to look back. I'm 
Okay. So now he's actually got, still got the two black eyes, but he's, his chin is popping up from the relief is starting to show. So what can I do to expedite that? We need to get some lift from this. Well, we need to see where the, see, okay. This is the tendency of, of everybody I know is to just futz in one area, stay in one little place, but I really got, <laughs> got to keep moving. So um, I got to put in these darks. Changed my mind. Okay. Otherwise the whole thing is not going to make sense. Okay, this is dark there, this is it. Right by this rosette is... Got to be consistent with where the dark is hitting. Going to get this little gradation going again like we did up here by putting in the dark. So you just got to lift it up. Oh, that was kind of kind of lined up. And I want it a little bit lighter. It's only totally contaminated all my brushes. So I'm just going to start at the bottom and then blend it, to the, blend it up to the dark. When I'm blending, I put a lot of pressure down below. But when I get these two where they intersect, I am a lot lighter on the, pre the pressure on the brush. Right here, you can hear it. I'm scrubbing. But by the time I get up here, I'm not scrubbing it in. It's a kinder, gentler stroke. Now, I don't want it to look like it just, yeah, that's better. You start scribbling, that helps it look better. That's not really the technical term for blending, but it, it looks more cohesive and it doesn't look just fake. Okay, that's good. That'll start to pop out now. And let's see, we've got another little flower going on. The guy liked flowers. I really like to paint statuary and reliefs. And uh, in another lifetime, I will do more sculpting. It's all part of what I love about form. I like things to be able to come alive and start to look three-dimensional. You know, he's starting to get some form just in his little raw state that he is. Okay, I'm going to put some massive light down so that I don't overdo the darks. And I'm just going straight into the white. And if you look at the reference photo, no, it's not that light right here. But unless I put it over-exaggerate, overstate, I will lose it later. This, that, that's a little bit lighter. And I'll darken that up after. Even this, where the little flower is. Now, can you do it by putting the exact right color down the first time? Sure you can, but I am compensating for, there are certain things that I know I do a certain way every time. And I know I have a tendency to do these things. So I know how to compensate for my shortcomings. And so, if, but if you can get it right and just nail it, go for it. I think it's because I need to acquire some more patience. I just like to dive in the pool and start painting. better. And what's going over on this side? We've got a little, need a little more medium. Got a flower over here. Do we even want to put that in? Yeah. It's light here. Here and here, the rest is kind of dark. This whole thing is light. I'm looking at mass shapes, huge, big shapes of light and dark, not 
not what it is. And it's a good thing that I can't tell what it is. <laughs> Otherwise, I get caught up in that, just like everybody else. Okay. And that's kind of shadowy there. Nice balance with the light and dark. This is a great. I've, I've done a lot of paintings with this, this reference photo. I really like this piece. It's been a while, though. It's new every time. All right, and that flower had some dark. It was kind of dark up here. I'm filling in around everything else, and then I'm going to go back to the face, see what I can do about making him come alive. Okay, and then this top went here, and that was a little bit like that. This is actually, see, I'm putting this right over the top of the white so that it's not as dark as it would be if I just did it straight. And this is going to be darker toward the top. Again, fade out, less pressure, less pressure on the brush. Okay, that's a good rough for that side. Let's see what I can do about uh, down here. Now, there's a lot of little ornamentation going on right in this area. If I were to paint that in, it really it doesn't make sense. It's not necessary. doesn't add to the lift. So I'm just going to put some dark right there. That's great balance. Going to make that little part of that little rosette flower pop. Yeah, that's good. Takes you, you know, we talk about directing people in your painting. It takes you straight up to his face. That's, that's really the center of interest, so that's where we're going. Um, doesn't have to be entirely dark down there. Could throw in a little medium color. Yeah, that's good. Throw in some light. Right here, you notice when I get to the edges so that I go all the way to the edge, I lift it up. Sometimes I turn it upside down, just depends on my mood. Okay, that's starting to get some shape there. I'm still not sure whether I like this, and I'm almost wondering if I should just blacken that area, and I might do that. I really, you know what I'm doing is I'm looking back at, you know, I stand back and look at my painting and, you know, from a distance. And I can do that by looking at, we have a monitor here that we can look at. And I really think that that one area is totally unnecessary. So even though it's in the reference photo, it's coming out right now. I think it helps define him by having just that little, yeah, that's good. Okay. Now I just need to address the other side of the painting and see where we're at and see what I need to do. And once I get to that point, I might add some color or I might not. I'm kind of liking it just in, the, in a value study stage. All right, so this is a little bit, uh, it's not dark, but it, you need to show that plane change. So that's, oops, that's a little too dark for wh what's happening there. Right, that's better. And let's see, right here, it's just a medium dark. I want to get some form going here. Do I ever knock it off? Yeah, sometimes it falls off all over the carpet, the drapes. 
worst thing that ever happened, like putting the painting in the wrong place, is I put a coat of medium over it to help it dry and to even it out. And I left it outside for, you know, just a second. And um, it felt it was done. It, the painting was done. It fell over into the, into the, onto the concrete. Um, so it picked up dirt, dog hair. Oh, I just cried. It was horrible. And, but I, I was able, but if that does happen to you, <laughs> I was able to put a, you know, a massive amounts of this medium that I use over the top and take a sponge brush because the painting underneath was dry and I was able to remove all that. It, it took a couple hours, but I did get it all off. But it was a good learning experience for me. I haven't done that again. Okay, so we got enough light there. That's definitely a what was I thinking episode. What I was thinking is I didn't want the fumes in the studio, but it sure wasn't worth doing that. Okay. Well, I think I've avoided this area as long as possible. So I need to go back and see what I can do. He's got this little pouty thing coming on here. So we'll see what we can do there. This is like a medium color. It's not real light. He's got a nose there. This needs to be a little bit lighter. And I do need to address hair needs to be a little bit darker and then I can finish his face. Needs to be a lot darker. Okay, so this area is dark and this and do a nice little gradation. It'll help it turn. We've talked about turning before, but that's what I mean about things going round or giving form. Okay, so this comes up, and it really doesn't make sense as far as what that's doing, so I'll just give it a little squirrely, squiggly, curly Q thing. I don't know what was happening in the reference photo, but I like what I did better. Um, it's good when that happens. <laughs> it's when, I, when it happens that I don't like it as well. That's, that's not happy. Okay, so he's got some dark, not quite that dark going on there. He does have some hair and stuff going on on this side of the face and some, a little bit of dark. So that needs to be addressed. This other stuff that I do around him is going to help define his face. Let's see. It needs to be darker there. Darker there. Okay, I'm going to get back and look at that and see if that's starting to make sense. It is. Um, I'm starting to get... I mean, his face looks pretty distorted, so I've got to work on that. But I'm starting to get the quality of light and how it would hit that rosette. And that's really what I want to get from this painting. So um, now I need to just uh, address, <laughs> address the parts of his face that are a little squirrely and uh, maybe give some a little bit of form to this too because that's not quite defined yet. There are like little things going on here. He's got, what has he got? Doesn't matter what he has. I'm trying to figure out what he has so that I can make it up in my head. Um, now that's just really twisted. If I would just look at the reference photo, it would tell me exactly what to do. So I'm looking at the photo going, okay, just add a little dark hair, a little bit of light hair. This is a case where my brain gets in the way. I really should just pay attention to what I see and what I feel. For an artist, I'm pretty whole-brained, and um, sometimes it's hard when you switch back and forth. Okay, he's got a little curl there. <clears throat> Swirly stuff. That's dark. 
That doesn't look real three-dimensional, does it? Yeah, a little bit of light to this section. And because the brush is contaminated, it looks it's going to add a little stuff to it. That's good. Yeah, that way it doesn't look so flat. I don't like flat. Okay. This area even is catching some light, and I need to wipe my brush or I'm going to lose everything I just did. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is soften his little black eye a little bit. Add a little light here. He's got some Irish eyebrows going on here. We'll see, see if that's going to stay or go. It looks just like my uncle's eyebrows. Or he's thinking about something. Got a little bit of, he's concentrating because there's some stuff going on with the forehead, wrinkles. I'm going to soften this whole area and reestablish his eyes because I don't like where I put them. See, that's a good thing. You can just start over anytime. This needs to be, let's see, what is his nose doing? Got a mouth hair. And if his nose goes like that, I'm lining things up. When you start to draw, it's like, okay, wh where is this in relation to something else? Um, is it? So I'm trying to get this line lined up. And it's very light right in here, so I think I'll put in extra light reestablish it because it's very contaminated. Okay. That's better. A little softer. This should have been a little lighter. What's going on with this little, you need some white here. Right above everybody's lip, really, if they're out in sunlight, is like kind of like a milk mustache. And it's, there's this area right above your top lip that's lighter than everything else. And he's got some reflected light that you can see that I'm going to put in. And right below, which I put in too much dark, so we'll have to see if we can change that. I like this brush. Let's add some medium gray to this side so that, that starts to make sense. Might be even a little darker. See if I can push it a little bit. Okay, that's dark. So I like this whole plane of his face right here is darker than the rest of it down there. He's spooky. Okay, we'll have to see what we can do to fix that. This is dark. It's got a little kind of chin going on here. This is just a really awkward shape, so I need to soften that. That's better. Okay, so now I start to look back, and so his face is softened considerably since it was. And I just think that even though in the reference photo it's really dark there, that that's just too harsh for the poor guy. So 
I'm going to soften it up. Totally soften it up. And then we'll put his eyes back in. It's always disconcerting when you're doing a portrait or even when you're doing a statuary and the eyes are, aren't there. Grandkids hate it. They come in and they, Grammy, put some eyes in. Sometimes it's just too wet. Okay, so he's got a lot of that going. And you know what? There needs to be some slight, slight stuff going on in his chin and that side of his face so that it's not just flat. We can't have flat. It's a very slight change. And then this is very light, and this is only a little bit light. Okay, so now we're getting closer to where we can put some... So we went from something that was more, more refined, and what did I do to get it closer to where I wanted to get it? I simplified, I reduced, I blended out things that I didn't want. I'm going to blend this area here. And let's see. Let's see what that eye's doing. I'm going to move that. Still looks like something's in his eyes. I'm getting back. Okay, that's happier. That's much happier. Um, his eyes are lined up. If I soften that dark area there, he's not going to be squinting so bad. Add a little bit of, uh, yeah, I'll blend this first. There's also, if, if, if I were just to leave this as a rough steady, I might not blend these edges, and it might just leave it rough. But um, you know I'm going to go back into this between now and next time we meet. So I'm going to blend this. OK. Needs to be a little dark there to delineate the chin. And soften it. kind of went a little too far. Push this down just to get a little more form. Maybe make his mouth a little bigger, a little happier. Okay, that's better. Soften this. Now, in this, in in this area, I'm going to soften and look and soften and check because, you know, I would, you know, you've heard me say I'm the queen of overblending sometimes. So if I don't look often enough, then I overblend. So there's dark hair. I do need to address this and add with a stiffer brush some dark right in here to help show where this part of the statuary stops. You know, this ended up being a lesson more in a value study than in something that, that's really cool or warm, although you, you'll, you'll see how you can get the light in something that's cold. And what I may do is make this a two-parter and, so, and leave it alone and address the cool colors to it next time. Okay. Okay, so, you know, what we talked about this earlier in the show, what does give your wall some soul mean? It really means not worrying about what anybody thinks and painting what you like, and it's 
um, not waiting around uh, to be inspired, just giving it a shot and seeing what happens. I would miss a lot of good paintings if I waited till inspiration struck me. And uh, just, just really going for it. Dive in the pool. Give it a shot. So this is a good lesson in light and dark, adjusting placement. Um, and I'm in the way of my painting. Uh, adjusting placement, starting to get a sense of form. You can tell that this is round. And um, he's starting to pop up from this whole area. You can see how the light's hitting his face. So this is a good value study. Um, I, I don't know that it was necessarily a great study in what's warm and cool. So I really think that we are going to do a two-parter in the next show and uh, start putting some cool colors. So, God, that means two shows in a row where I'm not going to be able to use a lot of red, but that's okay. <laughs> when we get to the March show, it'll be all red. Thanks for watching. Give your wall some soul.